Ladies and gentlemen, I'm really excited to be presenting today. My objective is to be teaching you about day trading and really making it as simple as possible, but also more importantly, answering any potential questions that you have about day trading. In my personal opinion, day trading is simple, but difficult. Simple, but difficult. What do I mean by that? Well, when I refer to simple or difficult, Harry, so uh, Mr. Thorne, this is uh, this is the only screen. I, I don't have a presentation, just the chart. So I'll be, tra I'll be talking from the chart. Um, when I say simple but difficult, what do I mean by that? Well, think about doing a thousand push-ups, right? I can't do a thousand push-ups, at least not in a row. But what I can say is that a push-up by itself is actually a pretty simple concept, right? You just get on the ground and you push your body higher. <laughs> that's that's it. Very, very simple concept. However, doing a thousand of them is difficult and challenging. So that's very similar to the stock market, to trading in general. Trading is actually and should be as, as simplistic as you can possibly make it because what you're doing is you're, diagno uh, you're diagnosing thousands of bits of information in seconds. And see, in order to do that appropriately, it's often better to really approach the market from a very, very simplistic standpoint. So my objective is to teach you a little bit about the market sentiment, S-N-I-T-I-M-E-N-T, -I -I -E market sentiment. So when I'm day trading, the two simplistic parts that I'm looking for, uh, here it goes, because the, the title of the presentation is Two Simple Ways of Day Trading. I'm looking for gap ups and I'm looking for gap downs. That's why. Now, to answer why I look for gaps, that answer is actually pretty simple. The question, why do I look for gaps, the answer is because it helps me remove a lot of other stock choices, <laughs> right? In a given day, there's only a few stocks that gap. When I say a few, I mean a few hundred, probably 100 or 200, but that does reduce magnificently the amount of stocks that are out there for you to trade every single day. Now, not only does it remove the amount of choices that you can trade, but also it provides you with a direction. And when you're day trading, direction is key. You want to be able to answer within two seconds, right? Two seconds. So we're going to do a few of these uh, in just actually two or three minutes. I'm going to give you a few examples. Let's see if we can determine in two seconds is the stock trend up down or sideways because that's really going to be your goal when you're day trading or when you're doing any type of trading is being able to determine the direction immediately right so that's going to be kind of the goal and the objective of all trading is to be able to determine the direction so since we have weight watchers on the screen so we have weight watchers on the screen what do you guys think is it up is it down or is it sideways up down sideways what do you guys think just we're looking at it today. Today's movement. Up, down, or sideways. Pushpa's got the first answer in. Justin's got the first answer in. Bill's got it. Gerald's got it. Tom's got it. Nancy's got it. Harry's got it. Mr. Chin has it. Anyone else? So, so far, all the answers are correct. Jesse has it. Dan has it. Fantastic. All right, everyone's saying up. Now, keep in mind, as I mentioned earlier, you want to make trading as simple as possible. So you have to answer the question when you're trading, is it going up, is it going down, or is it going sideways? So give it two seconds, and that's a literal two seconds. 1,001, 1,002, one Mississippi, two Mississippi. You want to be able to answer this very, very quickly. So let's go look at one other one. Uh, let me put on my cursor, and let's go look at Target. So Target yesterday, uh, and really today, up, down, or sideways, just the last two or Two days. Target up, down, or sideways. What do you guys think? 1,001, 1,002. There come all the downs. Yes, Tom, you're crushing it. Dan, I like it. Jason says, howdy, bro. Good luck. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Uh, Justin says, downage. Yep, so we're going down on that one. Let's look at another stock. Pretty popular. You may or may not have heard of this company. There's a good chance you have. Apple, up, down, or sideways, ladies and gentlemen. Are we going up? Are we going down? We're going higher. Yeah, we're going up. So when you're looking at a chart, day trading, swing trading, long-term trading, you want to be able to ask that question, what is the direction? Because once you figure out the direction, you will be able to know 
what type of strategy to apply. So what we're going to be talking about is the gaps and understanding and being able to determine the sentiment. What I mean by that is how people are feeling. Because you've probably, type in a one if you've ever been to a day trading webinar before. Type in a two if this is your first. I'm expecting a lot of ones, everyone in the world and their grandma has been to a day trading webinar at some point in their time. <laughs> Right? Type it in two, though, if this is the first ever, and it's totally fine if this is the first day trading webinar of your life, because by the end of the webinar, I do anticipate you to know a vast amount of information very, very quickly. So mostly ones. We got one, two. This is awesome. All right, Josh, cool. So I expect a lot of questions from you. Um, Bo says, I do not see the Apple chart. What chart do you see, Bo? I hope you see the Apple chart. Um, oh, Daniel posting in a two. All right, great. So we do have some traders here for the first time ever wondering about a day trading webinar. That's great. Well, that's what. Let's talk about the sentiment. Sentiment is feeling, and when you're trading, you want to be able to to pick the direction up, down, sideways, and then you want to determine how are people feeling about it. Okay, up, down, or sideways, and then how are people feeling? So feel free to write that down. When you're day trading, since today is mostly about day trading, when you're day trading, number one, determine the direction. Number two, determine the feeling. Up, down, sideways, and then determine the feeling. So we're going to talk for the next about 15 minutes about this feeling of trading and what people are anticipating and what people are thinking. Because if you can answer this question, if you can get really, really good at answering the question, what are people feeling or thinking? What are people feeling or thinking? You can get an incredible and discernible edge on the markets every single day, in my personal opinion. So let's go talk about it. I'm going to hop over here to Target. Um, Bo says I still see the Target chart. So let me actually hop back over to Target. I'm going to clear my drawings. Hop over here. Here we go. We're going to go back to Target, we're going to go back to Apple, and we're going to go back to Weight Watchers, we're going to look at a lot of these. So let's talk about how we're feeling. The best way, Daniel and Josh, to determine how people are feeling is to put yourself in their shoes. That's the best way to find out how someone feels about a particular situation. So let's answer this, well, let's ask the question and then answer it. Josh and Daniel, if you bought Target shares, what's today, Wednesday, on Monday, if you bought Target shares on Monday, how are you feeling today or yesterday? How are you feeling? Daniel says bad. How? Why are you, why are you feeling bad? Why are you feeling bad? You're, I mean, if you bought on Monday, you're losing a lot of money, right? <laughs> you're feeling pretty lousy. You're going to go buy a handle of Captain Morgan and drink your pains away. I get it. <laughs> Scott is like my mother-in-law is coming over. That's funny. So you're feeling bad, right? You're feeling upset. You're not super pumped. You're a little downtrodden. If you know that and you think, okay, if I would be feeling that way, even though I didn't actually have shares of Target, but if I can look at this chart and say, had I bought shares, I know some people would be upset. When people are upset, when they're losing money, what do they likely do? Oftentimes, they begin to sell. Yeah, they begin to sell. That's a very, very key thing, Daniel, right? Understanding if a bunch of people are selling, right? Because if a bunch of people are selling, what do you want to be doing? You're going to be selling with them, right? If a stock gaps down, this is a specific type of sentiment that I'm going to refer to as being trapped, having nowhere to go being trapped. So this is when you see a when you see a stock with a bunch of white candles, especially well, if you use green or red or white or black bullish candles. There's very very few guarantees in the stock market. But I can give you one right now. If you see a bunch of bullish candles in the market, that means someone bought there on that day. It's a guarantee. Someone in the world bought there on target recently. Someone bought here, 
someone bought here, someone bought there, someone bought there, someone bought there, someone bought there, someone bought there. We can guarantee that 100% certainty, which is very rare to say in the stock market, but someone unequivocally purchased shares of Target there. So when Target gapped down yesterday massively, how were people feeling? They were feeling upset. They were feeling scared. They were feeling worried. They were losing money. And so they sold. So they got out of the position. Are you able to see any other instance on recent data on target where this happened? Are we able to see any other recent data on the screen from when this happened? I'll point to it. Just give me about three seconds. I want to see if you guys can find it. But here's one right here. Here's another one right here. Let's talk about these for a few seconds. So these particular gaps, I know this is a very simple question, but I, I found that if you're asked simple questions, you get really good answers sometimes on the stock market. Right here, is this a bullish candle, yes or no? Is this a bullish candle, yes or no? Bill says, are there gaps on intraday charts? There are, Bill, they're a little bit more rare, and they often come in when there is lower volume. So most of these gaps I'm referring to are from one trading session to another trading session, specifically referred to equities. Specifically referred to equity. Um, so this particular candle that I'm pointing to in the red is a bullish candle. Yes, 100%. Unequivocally, we can answer the answer. You can answer the question, is this a bullish candle by, a candle by saying yes. How do we know it's a bullish candle? Because it's white. White candle means it closed higher than it opened. So we can say for sure that people bought right there on that red candle. It's a guarantee. It's a fact. And again, very few times you can say that in the stock market. This is a fact that the candle that I'm pointing to in red, someone definitely lost money the next day when that stock gap down because someone bought there in red. So the very next day when it gapped down, people were losing money. People were afraid. People were trapped. Someone out in the world was trapped. They were feeling lousy. They were losing money. And what, what began to happen, Daniel? Selling started to happen. So again, if you're looking at selling, when selling starts to happen, you can be there to take advantage of the selling opportunities because most of us here, I'm assuming, know how to make money as the stock is going down. If you don't, I know a few really cool companies that will teach you how to sort sell stocks. Let's look at another one. So the second candle here, uh, the second gap that I'm pointing to, we had another bullish candle right here, white candle that gapped down, same exact sentiment. People were scared, people are losing money, and they begin to sell and sell and sell. And so that's what happened just the two or three days ago on Target. So yesterday on Target, uh, I was looking at it all day long for a bearish trading opportunity and just never got triggered in. Today though, we did have a nice little rollover on target today, a little bit of a continuation bearish. So if you're knowing and you have an idea in your mind that the stock is going to continue down a little bit lower, and if you know that the direction is down and that people are feeling crummy, lousy, and they're losing money, and if a bunch of people are going to be selling, what you can then do is simply create a plan to sell with them. If you sell with them, you can make some money. Let's go look at a bullish position on Apple really quickly. Um, actually, you know what? Let's look at one of Weight Watchers. It'll be a little bit easier to explain right now. So here's Weight Watchers, and I'm going to point to two candles with a red line. There you go. Candle from yesterday and the candle from the day before yesterday. So ladies and gentlemen, on those two candles were people buying on Weight Watchers, yes or no? I know, really easy questions, but that's okay, right? We've got to be able to answer the easy questions first before we can start answering very difficult questions in the stock market. So were people buying there? Yes, absolutely. How do we know that? Because they were bullish candles. They were white candles. White candles means these stocks opened and closed higher. I'm sorry, they closed higher than they opened. So there's a lot of people buying Weight Watchers the last two days. What I'm not saying is that they knew some insider information 
I'm actually not saying that. So I'm not saying this particular presentation is not going to be anything about predicting earnings. This particular presentation is just something about looking at the candlestick sentiment and then from there being able to determine how to day trade it. So again, as a recap, number one, you determine the direction. So Weight Watchers, bullish, gapping up. Number two, you determine how people are feeling. That's what we're doing right now on Weight Watchers. So a bunch of white candles, stock is gapping up. So a lot of people are locking in a profit. What are they likely going to do, boys and girls, today on Weight Watchers? A bunch of people are profitable. They got, a, they got some money overnight. They're excited about it. They're all pumped up. What are they doing? Mr. Richard has got an answer in. Daniel's got an answer in. Lewis has got an answer in. Bill's close. So a bunch of people are selling. A bunch of people are going to sell. Because they were already in, right? They were already in two days ago. So when the stock gaps up unexpectedly like that, people are going to sell. Now, I know you can see a giant bullish candle here, and that's okay. Trust me, that's part of all of this. But if you can expect some profit-taking to come in, that's a great key term, profit-taking. People are going to start taking some of their positions off the table. They're going to create some selling. So when that selling comes in, what's likely going to happen and transpire is that the stock will receive some selling pressure. So if you can go into a trade and say to yourself, all right, here's the deal. People were very, very bullish the previous day. The stock is gapping up. I'm expecting them to take some profits and to sell. Have you ever heard of the term, buy the bounce? Type in a one if you've heard that term before. Buy the bounce. So I heard the term, buy the bounce, buy the dip. All right, there's a lot of ones. Buy the bounce, buy the dip, buy the pullback, buy the retracement, buy low, sell high. They all mean the same thing. I personally like to call this a retest gap. A retest gap. A retest gap, ladies and gentlemen, is very, very simple to define, in my opinion. It's when a bullish candle gaps up the next day. When a bullish candle gaps up the next day. Dan has a great question. Dan says, if the gap down, people are feeling trapped, what are the people feeling on the gap ups? Excitement. They're happy. right? They're ready to sell. They're happy. They're, they got a profit. They're making some money. They have a positive P&L. They don't know why it's gapping up, so they're going to lock in some profit. So this locking in profit is going to cause, at open, a pullback. So notice on the candle, we open right here, and then this lower shadow represents what? The lower shadow literally represents when people started selling early on in the morning, and then they started buying. This pullback, this move right here, the thing I'm drawing, so let me kind of draw it on this screen right there, this is called the retest, the pullback the retracement. This is your buying opportunity. So what I'm about to do is I'm about to zoom in to a very important intraday time frame. So we've been looking at the daily charts. So I'm going to show you my process every single day when I'm looking for day trading opportunities. Is I mentioned earlier, I'm looking for gaps, right? I'm looking for gaps, then I'm trying to determine the direction, up, down, or sideways, and then I want to figure out how people are feeling. We only have three steps, and these three steps are actually pretty simple. Find a gap, up, down, sideways, how are people feeling? So far, we haven't actually done any trading of any kind. This is just all a mental game of figuring out how people are feeling, because again, we can figure out how people are feeling, we are able to trade that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the five-minute chart. I'm about to look at the five-minute chart. That's the time frame that I trade from the most. So I'm going to go from daily into the five-minute chart. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of zoom out 
um, a little bit and turn on what's called the extended hours. So I'm going to turn on the extended hours chart and we're going to discuss the sentiment of this particular trade. Because really, I think this is fascinating. I think this is really, really incredible. So here in yellow, this is the extended hours trading or the post market trading. So on Weight Watchers today, this was an earnings gap. So when the earnings gap came in, notice the stock traded higher and did what? Even in pre-market, the stock traded higher, people started taking profit in the pre-market, causing the stock to pull back, and then it started to bounce. This being called the retest. And my friends, this happens so often. The retest of a trade. Stock trades higher, and you know to wait because it is a retest gap, and you're saying to yourself, a bunch of people were already profitable from yesterday. I'm going to wait for them to start selling, and then I'm going to buy. That's what you're saying to yourself. So when you come up with the pre-market list, and I'll talk a little bit about that as well uh, in about 20 minutes when I'm doing kind of my Q&A, how I find these gaps is actually very easy, very simple. No, no crazy difficult softwares or anything, just really easy. You can find the gaps before they happen and then determine what type of gaps they are. So on Weight Watchers, this morning, one would have been able to look at the chart and say, okay, so let's go back to the daily chart and let's look at this. So Weight Watchers this morning was gapping up and you would, you would have been able to say before the market open, Weight Watchers is gapping up, white candle gapping up, it's a retest gap. What I'm going to expect to happen is I'm going to expect a pullback and then a buying opportunity. And that's a huge thing to know, ladies and gentlemen. That's a big deal. This is a big, big deal. If you can get that type of sentiment, and you can say, all right, if it's a white candle gapping up, I'm expecting a pullback before I buy. I mean, I can show you a hundred of these on this chart. Here's a white candle right here gapping up. You had two or three different situations where you could have waited for the pullback before you bought. Here would have been one, here would have been one, here would have been one, or all the way down here on a swing trade level. Here's another one, white candle gapping up. Here's the retest, and here's the buying opportunity. This right here is the example of the gap we talked about just a moment ago, right, Daniel? White candle gapping down. People are upset. They sold. Great opportunity to make money in the bearish market. Here's another white candle gapping up. What did it do, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> Shocking. What? It gapped up. People started taking profits. It sold down, and then it bounced. How weird. Again, it's all sentiment because people are people. People don't really change. People are humans. That's a quote from Jeremy Newsom. You can take that away. <laughs> you, can, you can use that for the rest of your life. People are humans. So people, if people are humans, they're going to be feeling that certain things the same way all the time. So if you know that that's going to happen, you can have and come up with a plan for what you want to do when the trade gets here. So if a white candle is gapping up, you're going to say to yourself, all right, I'm going to look for a buying opportunity. So again, let's come in here to the five-minute chart. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in really quickly on Weight Watchers, and we're going to talk about this candle by candle. So all this gray, yellow, tan coloration is the pre-market. This is market open. So ladies and gentlemen, let's answer a simple question. Here's the simple question. On Weight Watchers this morning, did it start to sell and did people start taking their profits? Yes or no? At open, did people start to sell and take their profits? Yes or no? And here's what's exciting. This is an unequivocal answer. Like This is a fact. We can look at it. We can look at this trade and say, yes. We can say, absolutely. How do we know that? Because the very first five-minute candle is bearish. It's a black candle, meaning that it closed lower than it opened. 
meaning that the market had to drop the price in order to find buyers because people were selling it and didn't want to buy it. So the stock started to drop. In fact, it moved, uh, let me find out, almost an entire point. Almost an entire dollar. Now, for some of my aggressive traders, let me actually find out here in a second exactly how far it dropped. Yeah, uh, open 94 cents. So I have some really aggressive traders who would have traded that in the first one minute uh, down. And had you bought 100 shares, or I'm sorry, technically had you sold short 100 shares, you would have made about 97 bucks, approximately. Maybe you got stopped out, maybe made a little bit of money, whatever. But in this situation, ladies and gentlemen, in this gap, were we looking for a bullish trade or a bearish trade from the analysis that I'm talking about right now for the last five minutes on Weight Watchers? Were we looking for a bullish trade or were we looking for a bearish trade? Yeah, we were looking for a bullish trade. We were looking, expecting, wanting, waiting, watching for the stock to do this, do this, and then do this. Maybe. So let's draw it. Boom, boom, boom. Candy from a baby. Actually, don't take candy from babies unless they're too young to eat it, then it's a hazard. But I'm just letting you guys know I've never taken candy from a baby. I don't know if it's easy or not. Maybe it's difficult. Maybe they start crying. Who knows? <laughs> right? You guys get the point? White candle gapping up, you're looking for a pullback. You're looking for that retest to come in. In fact, this is how I spell my name, Newsom. Hey, that's cool. Looks like an N. Last name is spelled Newsom, so this looks a lot like an N. So that particular pattern, that's what you're looking for. That's what you're waiting for. You're waiting for that pullback to come in. So one of, my, one of the traders in the room right now, his name is John. He says, I like the long tails on the next candles. Me too in a big way. If you're looking at going bullish on a trade, what does that candle tell you? If you're looking to go bullish on a trade, that candle says, hey bro, get ready. <laughs> if you're looking to go bullish, I'm a hammer. If, that was, if this was a dating website, this candle would say, hi, my name is a hammer and uh, I'm ready to go long. So let's go look at Weight Watchers. Again, on a five minute, this is the retest pre-market. Trade continues higher. Here's the pullback. Buying is coming in. We can look at this candle. This is a hammer candle is what the name of this candle is, hammer. This is like the hammer of Thor. Shout out to my good friend, Chris Hemworth. Okay, beautiful hammer candle, looking strong. And if you're looking at going bullish, this is without question, the time to start setting up your trade. So let me now dive in a little bit, and I know I'm giving a lot of information, but I'll give you more information even more soon. Let's talk about how you would have traded this on a risk basis, because just like my good friend Dan was saying earlier today, it's all about not losing money. That's the objective of trading. Don't lose a lot of money. So I'm gonna talk about mathematically how you can calculate your risk on this particular trade. Now, only myself and a few other uh, of the, the panelists and the organizers can see this answer. So go ahead and write in, what number are you comfortable losing on this trade? What number are you comfortable losing on this trade and really any trade? Because I'm going to do some math for you in about three minutes and just kind of give you some information on this trade. But how much money are you willing to lose? You hear all the time about day trading how much money you made, but how much money are you willing to lose is a much better answer, or a question, I should say. All right, cool. So let's take the first two answers. I had a $200 and I had a $25. I'm going to do both. I'm going to do both. So I'm going to do. I'm going to write this down, 200 and then 25 So let's talk about this for a quick second. In trading, one of the biggest breakthroughs is to keep your risk size the exact same on every single trade. Because if you wanted to do a $200 trade, $200 trade, $200 trade, and then a $1,000 trade, and let's say that you won on this one, you won on this one, you won on this one, and you lost on that one, are you up or are you down? You're down. And you're a 75% trader. 
<laughs> right? You're down. That should be that's mind boggling. So had you just kept the fourth trade, the exact same two hundred dollars, you would now be up four hundred rather than down two hundred. And you did nothing but change the risk size. That's all you did. And you're literally losing money. Here's another certainty. Here's another guarantee in the stock market, which is very hard to give, but I can give you one. It's actually math. Mathematically, if you lose less money than you make, you will be profitable. I know that sounds simple, but it really needs to be one of the biggest takeaways from today's session. If you lose less money than you make, you'll be profitable. So if you make $10 and you lose $3 on every single trade, you're going to be making money. So let's do the math for $200 of risk, or as I like to say, $200 of an R unit. So what you do is you take your entry, you take your stop, and you do some first grade math. You're going to subtract the two numbers. You're going to subtract 1684 by 1608. 1684, that's the entry. Why am I entering there? It's above the high of the hammer candle. Stop, 1608. Let's do some math really quick. What's the difference between those two numbers, my friends? Difference between those two numbers. If you need a calculator, go ahead and let's get it out. That's fine. Or maybe you're really good at math and you learn how to carry the, carry the goat over the hill. That's a 7. That's a 14. 14 minus 8 is 6. 7 minus 0 is 7. These cancel each other out. 76 cents. What do we do now? Well, now, my good friends, mathematically, we have the amount of risk on this particular trade. We have $200 this is how much money we're going to risk. And now we have these different size, the stop size between your entry and your stop. So you're going to take $200 and you're going to divide it by 76 cents. Now, some of you can do this in your head. Some of you probably can't. I can't. So if you're going to have a trusted little math calculator, you take $200 and divide it by 76 cents, and you're going to come up with a number. That number, my friends, is 263. What number does that represent, Daniel? That represents how many shares, mathematically, that you should buy in order to only lose 200 bucks if you are wrong on the trade, which most traders are wrong about 50% of the time. That's why it's very important to control your risk. Because if I know I'm going to lose $200 or less on every trade, and if I make money, hopefully I make $200 or more on every trade, if I can control my risk, I can be a 43% win-loss ratio, which I am, and I can make money, which I do. So if you can control the risk, the profits will take care of themselves. You guys have all heard this before. So you would set up in your order, in your broker, an order to buy at 1684 for 263 shares. That's it. That's the math behind day trading. I know that sounds kind of crazy, but it's about that simple. Once you find an entry, you find your stop. Now it's just coming up with how much money are you willing to lose, and my suggestion, my opinion, is keeping this number the same for an extended period of time to see if it's you or if it's the market. Mmm, interesting, yeah. All right, so let's do another example. I'm trying to think of another retest gap that was out there today. We looked at a lot of them. Uh, let's go pull up Apple really quick. Not quite a retest gap, but we'll talk about it anyway. Um, I can find some other gaps. Give me like 17 seconds. Let me send you this link really quick into the chat pane if you guys want. This is just the, uh, this is simply a bar chart gap up, gap down list. That's all it is. I'm going to go find a retest gap so that I can show you how one could have played this. Um, Citigroup. Okay, it's Citigroup, white candle, gapping up. John says, how do you set the target price? We will talk about that uh, right now. So white candle, gapping up. So let's go in here to the five-minute chart, and let's really quickly determine how this trade would have worked. So again, what we're looking for on this trade, so this is before the market opens right here. We're looking for this pullback, right? We're looking for something like this. We're looking for the in, the new zone. Don't call it that. It's a terrible name. Just, we're looking for the retest. 
Okay, so this is pre-market, right? This is before the market even opens. So the first five-minute candle that comes in on this particular trade on Citigroup is what's referred to as a high wave candle. We were mentioning earlier about feeling. How do people feel on the trade? And then it's important to know how people feel. How do people feel on this five-minute chart, ladies and gentlemen? How do people feel based on this candle? This is a candle that I love looking at. I love trading. It's called a high wave spinning top candle. This candle literally represents indecision, or as Bill said, ambiguous. They don't know. You got some selling in the first few minutes. You got some buying in the first few minutes. And it literally ends flat. If you're watching football, this is a tied game with two minutes left in the fourth quarter. Who's going to win? Probably the Patriots. But you don't know that for sure. So you're going to have to watch it. So this is an indecision candle. We don't know what's going to happen yet. Which is beautiful when you're day trading. Because if you have an indecision candle, but you already know your plan. So Citigroup, let me go back over here to the daily chart. It's a white candle gapping up. If we're looking at Citigroup chart, ladies and gentlemen, is it up, is it down, or is it sideways? Most of you might say it is up to sideways. That works for me. But it's bullish, right? You look at the trade, it looks bullish. You gap above this little resistance right here. You have this gorgeous little pennant pattern. Gaps up very nicely. So it's a white candle gapping up. It's a retest gap. Worst case scenario, if you really just don't know, simply look at the gap from the day. If the stock is gapping higher, your assumption at that point is that the stock is going to go up. So you're looking at playing it bullish, right? So back into the five-minute chart, back into the high-wave candle, and let's go set this trade up. Stop is below the low of the candle. Entry is above the high of the candle. Why? It's an indecision candle. So if it breaks higher, the trade should continue to work. How do we know we're bullish? Because it was gapping up. It's a bullish retest gap. We're looking at playing it bullish. I'll say it again. It was a bullish gap. We're looking at playing it bullish. The trade was bullish. So we're waiting for that bounce to occur. So Citigroup, high wave candle. Let's do this trade with a $25 uh, amount that uh, the trader suggested earlier. So $25 of a risk unit. The numbers are 61.43 minus $60.98. So you have to make this zero. You have to make this 14. Then that's become 13. Then that's become 13. So I believe that is five and then four, 45 cents. What do we do now? Can someone remind me? Because I forgot. I don't remember what to do. I'm, I'm lost and confused. I'm hoping someone can help. Divide it. Oh, yes, we divide it. Thank you for reminding me. So you take $25 and divide it by 45 cents. That's going to give you an amount. That amount is how many shares that you would mathematically take, 55 shares, in order, if you're wrong, to lose approximately 25 dollars. So 55 shares would cost, that would be an investment of 3,378 bucks plus commissions. Okay, so that's how, how much your investment is. That's how much cash you're putting on this trade to roll the dice to make some money. However, your risk is $25. So let's go look at the very next candle. Very next candle, ladies and gentlemen, on this particular trade. Did we get triggered in? Yes or no? Let's see if I can put this one on top. What have we gotten triggered in at 61.43? Yes or no? The answer is yes. Yes, we would have. We would have gotten triggered in. So now, how do we find our target? Was a very, very good question. Uh, earlier. How do we find the target? 
Well, remember that we have a stop of 45 cents. Type in a one if you've ever heard the term risk less than your potential reward. I expect to see a lot of one because I'm heard you. I'm sure you've all heard that a million and a half thousand times. Risk less than your potential reward. So if your risk is 45 cents, what you what should your reward be? More than that, <laughs> right? I mean. It should be more than that. So if your risk is 45 cents, let's have a target of a dollar. Is a dollar more than 45 cents? Yep, it's two times in fact. A little bit more than two times. So how could we find a dollar target? If we're risking 45 cents to make a dollar, that is very easy to do. $62.43 would be the target. That'd be it. Now, could you do 45 cents times three? Yes or no? Well, the answer is yes, of course. Could you do 45 times four? Yep, could you do it times 10? Could you do it times 1,316? The answer is you can, yes, you can do it times whatever number you want. Here's something that's a big takeaway, I hope, from this particular presentation. Is most day trading, think about it like baseball, the game of American baseball. You're going to look for a lot of singles. I'm sorry, you're going to look for home runs, but you're probably going to get a lot of singles, maybe some doubles every now and then. I get about two home runs every month in day trading, which, in, which translates to about 3R two times a month, two additional times, so 6R total. So whatever my risk size is, right? So if my risk size is 450, I'm looking for two home runs in a month that make a three R gain each. The rest are going to be small singles. That's usually just what happens. Just Maybe that makes me terrible at trading. I'm not sure, but that's just usually the way it is for most traders that I know who actually make money trading. That's the way it works. So let's go for a few more candles then. Uh, so we're triggered in. Next candle. Looks good. Next candle. What do we do right here, folks? We got a bearish candle. Are we freaking out? Are we upset? Have we started crying yet? My theory, we've only been in the trade 15 minutes. All right, we got triggered in. It's only been 15 minutes. Granted, this is a bearish candlestick pattern. It's an evening star reversal. So for me, if I'm in this trade, I'm thinking to myself, all right, well, here's the deal, Newsom. This is a retest gap. It's a white candle gapping up. We did get a small retest here. Maybe we're about to get a bigger one. If the bigger one comes down and it stops me out, no big deal. I lost an R, awesome, no sweat. If it actually does bounce, then I'll take the stop and I'll move it up to lose smaller. So what I'm hoping for in the next candle is a bullish candle. Let's find out. Next candle is a bullish candle. So I'm going to say, oh, thank you. Woo! So I'm going to take the stop. In my broker, move it up to 61.16, which is below the low of this white candle. And from here, I'm going to hope that it breaks out bullish. Boom. There's the bullish breakout. I'm feeling good about the trade. I'm going to move my stop up to 61.21. All right, market is closed. Uh, and then I'm going to take my target, and I'm going to make my target a dollar for my entry, which was $62.43. And then... I'm going to walk away for a little bit. I'm going to walk away. Because from here, you're already in. You've already mitigated your risk. It's going to be very difficult to lose less than your risk unit. So from here, you're just going to hang out on the trade and see if the trade trades your target or not. And you'll notice Citigroup all day never made it. Never made it to your target. Does that mean you did a terrible job? No. Would you have made money on this trade, yes or no? Yeah, you would have made money. Not a lot, but you would have made some. And that's kind of the point of day trading, right? We trade because we love it. We love doing this. We're gonna want to, we want to do this. There's very few people in the world who are in a trading webinar about day trading right now at 4 Eastern on a Wednesday. But you guys are here because you're awesome and you want to learn how to do this stuff. Again, trading is simple but difficult. 
it really is easy. I mean, you can do this one strategy, just this one simple thing, and that's all you do. You could even do this one strategy on just one stock, <laughs> and that's it. You don't have to do anything more. So again, trading has nothing to do with how many opportunities are out there, what you can do, what you can't do. What we've got to understand is that when times get boring, we have to be able to not do anything. When the trade setup is not there, we have to be able to wait. Do you guys agree? We've got to be patient. That's all. In fact, I'll help you spell it because this is one of the most important things in trading. I'm a bad speller anyway, but I'm doing this on purpose. If you want to make money trading, if you want to get paid, this is what you have to do. You have to be patient. Because, yes, as a professional, real-life day trader, I can tell you right now there are days when I sit there and take absolutely nothing. A lot of traders think, oh, every single day if I learn day trading, I'm going to make $100, $1,000, $4,000. You're right. <laughs> I, I have worked with some incredible day traders, the best in the world, and no one makes money every single day. If they tell you they do, say, all right, send me your bank statements, your W-2s, your bank account, your brokers, prove it. I don't believe you. Overall, you can make money, but I'm saying every single day there are trades sometimes where the best trade is no trades. You have to be patient. If you want to get paid, you have to be patient. So in this situation, um, had you taken the trade, you would have made, I don't know, if you're doing $25, uh, $25 R, you would have made probably about, I don't know, 13 bucks maybe, something like that. So it depends on if your commission structure is worth it, all that kind of good stuff. And you have to consider all that when you're trading, but that's just a normal part of trading, right, the commissions. Let's go look and find one other retest gap. Uh, probably not on the financial because those are going to be all kind of the same. Um, key Corporation, sure. Let's go look at Key Corporation, K-E-Y. All right, so Key Corporation, white candle, gapping up. Let's go see if this one will work today. So, ladies and gentlemen, here's what's beautiful on this particular trade. This is the five-minute chart. Are you able to see the retest that I've been talking about this entire time? Type it a one if you can see it. I'll draw it for you. So even if I can't, if you can't see it, it's okay. But type in a one if you can see clearly where the retest on this particular trade is that I'm talking about. White candle gapping up. You're looking for this type of momentum. You're looking for that type of look. Where is it? It is right here. Where's Waldo? Waldo's right there hanging out eating some hot dogs. That's the trade set up on this particular stock. Now, how would you have known that in hindsight? How would you have known that going back? Well, my good friends, there's a lot to learn when you're day trading. There's a lot of information to learn. Candlesticks is an incredible part of day trading. It's monumentally important. In fact, I'll say this crazy statement. If you do not know candlesticks very well, you probably will not make money day trading. Candles are hugely important. A lot of traders ask me all the time, Jeremy, what's one thing? If you could study nothing else other than this one thing in trading, what would it be? I would say candlesticks. Learn candlesticks because candlesticks are a visual representation of what people are feeling, how they're thinking, where they're buying, where they're selling. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't mean the trade is going to work or not, but it gives you an idea. Candles literally give you a visual blueprint of when you should get into the trade. They tell you, hey, I'm ready if you are. And you go, all right, and you get to make the decision. Are you going to get in or not? all based on candlesticks. Now, could you use moving averages in this situation? Sure, you can move it, Steve. Uh, you could use it as, if you want. Scott says, are you a Steve Bigelow follower? Yes, uh, myself and Steve have chatted a few times in the past. So if you're going to use the 8 line or the T line, and you, you, you want to use a moving average, you can do that, right? You'll notice that the moving averages is pulled down to about the 20 imbalance, but your setup on this particular stop would have looked something like this. Uh, stop would have been here. Entry would have been above the high of the bullish candle right there. And this trade would have worked out relatively okay. You would have made about what I refer to as an R on the trade. One R, meaning whatever your risk is, you would have made about that on a risk. 
Um, Shay says, do you always wait for the count to close before you decide to play? Yes. Whatever time frame I'm watching, I watch that candle to close. So if I'm watching a one minute, I have to wait for that one minute candle to close. If I'm doing a five minute, I've got to wait for that five minute candle to close before I'll take the trade. Um, Shay also says, do you do Haishinashi? Uh, Haishinashi. I do not. I do not. It's not my area of expertise. They're very useful, very valuable tools. You can absolutely learn them and trade with them, but I personally do not. Uh, Lewis, I do not use Ichimoku Clouds, no. I know how to use them. Um, I have a setup for them. I know a lot of traders who do use them. Where is it? Where clouds? It's around here somewhere. I'm probably skipping over like nine times. Cloud, 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 the cloud. <laughs> there it is. So there's the cloud. For me, uh, it looks too much like a 1970 rave. It looks like someone put graffiti on my screen, and it, might, it makes my mind hurt. So I don't use Ichimoku clouds, but you definitely can. Again, in the market, you can master everything. Uh, in the market, you can master one thing or le learn a little bit about everything. So if you have 417 things that you have to go through when you're trading, especially if you're day trading, it's going to make it very, very difficult. Dry ships is being requested. Dry ships is going to zero. Don't trade it. That's just my opinion, but I'm pretty confident on that. So don't trade dry ships, uh, bullish at least. It's just slowly enjoying the slow taste of death. Dry ships just <laughs> going to... Going to zero. I'm, I'm actually shocked that it's still on the NASDAQ exchange. It'll be OTC soon. Well, folks, um, we're pretty much getting to the ending part of this. Here's what I will say. If you want to learn how to day trade, I do know of a company that will teach you how to day trade entirely for free. I just so happen to work for them. It's called reallifetrading.com. If you type in the website, you click on classes, you click on day trading, it's entirely free. Everything, there's not one sales pitch. You can go through class one and class four. You will learn all you need to know about day trading, and it doesn't cost you a dime. The reason I do it is because I want people to truly educate themselves and so they can figure out what their real hurdle is. Most people say, oh, I don't have the money to learn how to trade. So I go, okay, prove it. Here's your analysis. Here's everything you need to know entirely for free. Come back to me in two weeks. Let's see how bad you really want it. Because if it's a money thing, I'm removing that from you. If you want some ebooks on candlesticks, you can click on classes and click on ebooks. I have ebooks on candlesticks, uh, four types of gaps. There's a lot of good information on the website. It's all entirely for free. Uh, so if you ever want to check that out, you're more than welcome to. But that's about as much information as I'm going to have on myself. Uh, I'm happy to help answer any questions that you guys have or anything else I can assist you with. Uh, Nancy says, G-I-L-D. G-I-L-D was a beautiful bounce off of a support not too long ago. Uh, here's G-I-L-D. And this analysis was based primarily 100% based on candlesticks. So 65.83 was the support. There's your candlestick pattern. It was almost, almost a perfect tweezer bottom. And the setup on G-I-L-D... Uh, well, that was it right there back in late, early February. Uh, so at this point, GILD has traded to a resistance. Uh, so myself and a few other traders exited today. And I'll be keeping my eyes on one of two things on GILD to happen from here. Either GILD trades lower and then bounces, and I'll look to trade it again, or it breaks out of this pennant pattern bullish, and we take it bullish. Dennis says, why do you teach for free? Because I love teaching, Dennis. I want to be a high school teacher, uh, a, hi a history teacher in high school. And unfortunately, history teachers don't get paid very much. And I just love teaching. It's one of my, that's my specialty, man. It's what I like doing. So I teach for free. Because I want to remove the barriers from people who can't pay money. Guys, I fully appreciate every single person out there who charges for the programs. I do think it's absolutely critical to have a charge for valuable information. I'm trying to target a different audience than a lot of other people out there in the world. I'm trying to target the kids of the world, 
uh, the stay-at-home moms, the stay-at-home dads, people that might not have jobs, people that might not have any education in school. And I want them to be able to understand that anyone can learn investing. You don't have to have a lot of money in order to invest. In fact, March is actually Kids Month at my company. At Real Life Trading, every single year, I host webinars just like this, actually in person and on the Internet, teaching kids about what the stock market is, how it works, how it moves, and how you can invest. Because that's really what's key is not necessarily making money, but helping people enrich their lives. I live by one of a, uh, a very interesting quote. If you want to make a million dollars, figure out a way to help a million people. If you want to make a million dollars, figure out a way to help a million people. And so I'm on people like... 79,000. <laughs> so I'm working towards the million thing, but it'll get there at some point. I just want to teach. Jane says, I'm sorry, trading binary options. Does the day trading cover that? No, it does not, Jane. Binary options uh, is as different uh, as day trading as cakes are different from pies. Two totally different things. Um, Wallace is Etsy. Oh, Etsy was a really good uh, gap today. Um, let me go over to Etsy. Give me like three and a half seconds. Etsy was a bearish trade today uh, that worked out very, very well. So in my day trading course, you're going to learn about another gap that's also very easily tradable called the bearish retest gap, which works the exact same way as the bullish retest gap, except in reverse. <laughs> right? So the bullish retest, I looked for something like this, and the bearish retest, I looked for something like this. It's the exact same principle, just upside down. Randy says, Forex trading. Uh, no, sir, I've never traded Forex. I will at some point in my life, but let me kind of explain why. Um, I like to focus on one specific market. Stocks and options make sense to me. I'm not a very political-minded person. Politics annoy the crap out of me, so I don't really talk a lot about politics, uh, and, and Forex is very political, in my opinion, very, very political. And since I don't know a lot about politics, I kind of stay out of Forex, number one. Number two, I've already mastered, in my opinion, stocks and options. I've learned about as much as you can learn that, and still stay profitable. You can learn as million things in the markets as you want, but the more you learn, it's more important to learn about yourself than the market in, in a way, in my opinion. Uh, but anyway. On that note, just like LeBron James only plays one sport professionally, Randy, right? That makes sense. I like to play one sport professionally, and I'll play some others for fun. Do I use option in gap trading? Yes, all the time. In fact, if you, if, if you get a chance to type in day trading weekly options into YouTube, I have the top rated video on the Internet about day trading weekly options because it's not a giant scammy thing. <laughs> It's legit. Works. Uh, Randy said, would this help with Forex? A little bit. Um, but Forex doesn't gap very much. It can, and the analysis still can help. But most of my analysis, as it relates to Forex, you'll probably be better learning um, the intermediate trading, Randy, for Forex. So if you come to my website, reallifetrading.com, click on classes, click on intermediate trading, uh, this information right here is more geared towards any market in a way. So, uh, Perfect, perfect, great. Mat uh, Mateus says, do you trade the ES? No, I do not trade E-minis or the futures. Uh, not yet, anyway. Not yet. Scott says, if they want to give back, they should know what to do. Yeah, exactly. Totally, just teach other people, help other people. Nancy says, Jeremy, thanks so much for an hour of knowledge. My pleasure. Nancy says, really enjoyed it. You're absolutely welcome. I didn't know exactly my ending time, so I figured I'd just go in an exact hour, but I think I still have some time for Q&A. If I have any questions at all, ladies and gentlemen, let me know. This is a no-judgment zone. Simply ask your questions. Either myself or Dan uh, will assist you in any way that we can. But I do appreciate you spending time with us today. It was a solid hour of info, and I know we went over a lot. I know Dan's recording all these sessions. I'll be emailing these, these sessions out to everybody. Just keep in mind the simplicity of trading and that it is difficult. Just because something is simple doesn't mean that it's not hard to do. Like dieting, <laughs> right? Or not eating a bunch of chocolate cake. 
dieting is very simple to do, and not eating a bunch of chocolate cake is very, I mean, it's, it's easy to think, if you think about it, but it's very hard, right? Put Etsy on the five-minute chart. I don't know if you want me to, Bill, but I will. It was a perfect trade today, um, absolutely flawless on the bearish gap. 100% undeniably beautiful. Gap down, white candle, entry, stop, just like that. Um, also, here was the retest, if you want it in another time, right there. So this is just a bearish retest gap. James says, what's the best five stocks to trade? Apple, Facebook, Baba, Gold, Netflix. Anthony says, what is the title? What is the title of what, Anthony? What is the title, title of what? This particular class? Two simple ways to day trade, I believe is slash was the title. So Jay, now write that in. Apple, Facebook, Netflix, X, and you. There you go. Anthony says, how do you find that YouTube video, Day Trading Weekly Options? Ah, just go into YouTube and type in Day Trading Weekly Options. I will 98% of the time be the first thing that comes up. Uh, let's go check it out. Day Trading Weekly Options. Boom, there we go. There you go, sir. Dirk says, okay. Anthony says, thank you, LOL. You're welcome. My pleasure. Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? This is awesome. This is a great Great energy. Thanks so much for asking great questions. I feel like you guys learned a lot. Um, I feel bad or I feel reminiscent if I don't give my email address. If you have any additional questions, you can email me anytime. Uh, my reply time frame is about 24 hours max. Jeremy at reallifetraining.com. It is spelled with two R's. My dad's name was Jerry. And my mom tried to be cute. So she did Jerry and me, Jeremy. And that's why I have two R's in my name. Sean says, thank you, Jeremy. You're the best. Oh, my pleasure. I just try to be a representation of awesome people like Dan and everybody else here. So thank you so much for being here, Chung. I appreciate that. Wayne says, where do you get the daily gaps? Oh, so many places. Uh, you can Google, if you want, um, gaps pre-market, and you'll come up with like 100 different websites. Uh, this is one that I uh, do use. I do recommend to a lot of my day traders they can use. It's totally free, very easy to access. There you go. Anthony, you're welcome. Pushkar, you're welcome. My pleasure. Thanks so much for being here, guys. It was fun. Louis says, appreciate your energy. Yeah, man, absolutely. So if uh, I will say this. If you have any children, we're going to be doing a lot of kids' webinars. And I promise there's no sales pitches of any kind in my kids' webinars. Email me at jeremyreallifetraining.com and let me give you the links to a lot of kids' webinars coming up this month. Remember, it's Kids Month. So I'm going to be doing classes like what is a mortgage? What is the stock market? How does a technical analysis work? What are credit cards? What is compounding interest? Stuff like that. Scott says, do we need a 26-point checklist uh, like Armo? No, sir. Nope. I don't, I don't think so. I think Melissa is an amazing, amazing trader. What I try to do, Scott, is take uh, amazing traders and make their information a little bit easier to understand. That's kind of my goal. John says, I just bookmarked the YouTube video. All right, right on, man. Cool. Lauren says, great job. Thank you. Um, all right, cool. Well, it's 3.20. I guess that was five minutes of Q&A. Uh, Dan, anything else for me? Brother? Brotato Chip? Teddy Roosevelt? Protein shake. <laughs> Protein. Uh, sorry, laughing at your own jokes is bad. Shouldn't do that. Uh, let's see. Pull that up. I think that's good. Kishmore says, if it's all free, how do you pay your bills? That's a great question. Uh, I trade the stock market. <laughs> that's pretty much what I do. Um... This stuff needs to be taught for schools and kids. I know. I know. So every March, I try to go to uh, go to schools and teach kids this stuff. That's what I do. So I'm trying to get this taught in schools. I 100% agree. I'm trying to kick the doors down and change the industry on this stuff. This, this needs to be like 
class one of kindergarten. Well, maybe maybe class seven because you have to teach them colors first. But after you learn colors and numbers, <laughs> trading and investing. Jade says, I'm also going to groom my kids to be traders. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Kids of the future, technically, hypothetically, and actually. They, they actually are, Met numerically. Colors, numbers, and chart patterns, yep. Lewis, thanks, man. I appreciate that. It means a lot. Very kind of you. You guys are putting in some great things. Thank you for the kind comments, guys. Um, Mateus says, thanks so much. Great job. I appreciate that. Any other questions before Dan takes over? Uh, he might be getting a snack, which is totally cool. Oh, there he is. Sorry. There's Dan. Jade says, I feel the school system has been rigged to groom employees. Oh, man. So true. So true. They want you better to be seen, not heard kind of thing. Yep. Absolutely. Any other cool questions? Let's do a let's do something that stumps. Do a tough one. What's a tough question? What's the meaning of life? That's usually what I get after I uh, after I say that. I do have an education. I do have a uh, an answer to that question. <laughs> the meaning of life: chocolate cake, fried chicken, and beer. Uh, just kidding. Meaning of life: finding out why you're here, doing it. And then giving generously. I think that's the meaning of life. That's why people respect those who have done that. Someone who's devoted their entire life to doing what they absolutely love. You know, I think that's a, an incredible concept. Jay says, how long have I been trading? I've been trading um, since I was seven years. 2011? 2010. I've been trading since I was 2010. Um, I was 20, 20 years old. Chung says, do you swing trade all the time? Yes. So, again, if you come over to my website, reallifetrain.com, under swing trading, I got three tabs, and I got day trading, and I got languages. By the way, Lewis, we even have this stuff translated into languages. I got Spanish, and I got French-Canadian. We take our classes, and we even translate them for people. We want to teach. Kishmore says, what a poor man can give if he or she wishes. What a poor man can give. Oh, man, time, energy, love, hugs, smiles. Pig Latin is next, Jason. <laughs> pig Latin. i got to learn Pig Latin first. I, uh, I actually don't understand Pig Latin. Lewis says, if you started in 2010, how long for you're good at it? I think that's a very great question. Uh, three years. It took me three years to figure this stuff out. Mostly because I was an idiot, uh, and I was just dumb and young and a college kid and thought I knew everything. Have you ever been there, Lewis? You know what I'm talking about? Do you know, do you know the feeling? <laughs> in college, you're 21, you know everything, right? So it took me, uh, it took me three full years of just nothing but horrendous losses. To, uh, to actually figure out how to take time to learn this stuff properly um, and know how to use risk mitigation, stuff like that. Um, what was I about to say? Oh, I forget. Something about just losing a bunch of money and being a moron. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Kishore. Appreciate it. Anthony says, trying to figure this out while keeping my account afloat. Yes. So don't lose the money. That's absolutely the key. Absolutely. Think about it like a um, like a college degree, guys, right? Most of the time in college, if you go to college for four years, sure, you might make some money part-time or whatever, but you got student loans maybe, right? You're going through college, yada, 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 four years, maybe you get a job, maybe you don't. But four years goes by, I mean, give yourself the same amount of time, right? If you've been day trading, most traders give up after two years, like the vast majority. Like, oh, I haven't made any money in two years. I'm going to give up. What other situ what other profession can you make money in two years? That's like becoming a doctor in two years and just start you know, operating on people. You're not going to make any kind of money in two years. Unfortunately, I just did the exact opposite. I just did three years of just horrendous, absolute, abysmal losses. I actually I wanted to write a book, and it would have been a bestseller. 
and I feel bad that I did not sell it. Maybe I still could. Here is the name of the book. The name of the book is Do the Exact Opposite of What I Do in the Stock Market and You Will Make Money. Do the, do the exact opposite because every single time I bought, the stock went down, and then every time I sold, the stock would go up again. <laughs> Anthony already wrote that book. Are you sure? Man, send it to me, dude, because it was brutal. I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't figure it out. If you actually, um, and again, I'll, let me turn up my volume, because Dan, if I'm talking over you, I'm sorry, man. I don't, uh, I don't see where Dan might be, but let me do this. If you want um, one of the best courses on trading psychology on the internet, and that's just my opinion, but I think it's pretty close to correct. Watch this class, um, Back Trading in Real Life. I posted in the chat pane for everybody. If you want to get a chance to snag it, should be in the chat pane. Back Trading in Real Life. Uh, this is where I go in and I actually take a stock and I trade it for about two years in front of everybody, candle by candle. And if you want to be able to see just the insights of trading psychology and how it works, and how you go about it, and what people are thinking, and the hurdles that people come in contact with. Uh, that's, man, insane. Correct, Mundo. Correct. Thanks, Dan. I appreciate that. So Dan just posted it out. Dan, am I, am I running out of time? Am I good? I always feel like I'm going too long. I don't want to hold everyone up if you guys got anywhere to go. But I'm, I will say I'm, I'm pretty much done. If anyone here needs to leave to go anywhere, um, yeah. Yes, so um, in March, mid-March, again, for Kids Month, uh, I'm going to be doing Trading for Beginners. Again, if you email me, um, I'm going to put the Trading for Beginners on your email list. So I can let you guys know exactly what I'm teaching these classes. But this, these classes are for anyone who wants to learn how to trade the market successfully. So again, if you have kids, uh, or if you're a kid at heart, or if you have friends who want to know this information, and you want them to be in a very comfortable, high energy, fast paced learning environment, um, let me know. These classes are entirely free on my website. You can watch them right now, but I'm reteaching them live in mid-March. So anybody can join them, um, but you know, email me so that I can put you on the email list and let you know that uh, Jeremy at reallifetraining.com. Scott says you're at last. We can go until seven. <laughs> seven p.m. Woo! Well, I'm only gonna go till uh, probably three thirty my time. I got a uh, afternoon swing trading room that I do at four, where we look over the markets. Today is Energy Wednesday. And there's a lot to talk about out there. Any other questions? I'll probably wrap up in about 60 seconds. Most of you guys are kind of popping out. Uh, you're welcome. My pleasure. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you. Very kind of you to say that. Anthony, thanks, man. I appreciate it so much. Uh, Scott, just hop over to the website. Learn about the education. The education is entirely for free. Uh, if you want to join the trading room, I do keep that exclusive, so there is a price tag on that, but I don't really ever talk about it. So if you want to join, you can. If not, no big deal. It's whatever. I like to keep, I like to keep it exclusive. People in there who want to make money, who want to trade, uh, who take, take, take trading seriously, it's not uh, nothing any, any kind of crazy. Lewis is already invited this afternoon. Uh, that's entirely up to you, man. If you want to go, I'll be there in 30 minutes. All right, William, you're awesome. Uh, I'm going to dip out, so I'm going to let Dan take over. I'm just going to shut off the mic and stop sharing my screen, which I think is probably what you have to do to let him know that you know that I'm over. But Folks, you're amazing. Oil, I'm bullish on. William, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for being here. You guys are absolutely incredible. Thanks for being a part of and investing. Dan, thanks so much for putting this on. You're absolutely a uh, pleasure and honor to work with. Very, very easy admin system to walk through. I love the GoWebinar platform. You guys are doing great. Let's continue to educate the world, ladies and gentlemen. Let's enrich lives. And until next time, love life, live life, and trade it. I'll see you later. Bye.